Okay, so let's finish up this section of the textbook. What's left is kind of a hodgepodge. We should introduce some things called the co-function identities, and then we should do an example or two with this right triangle trigonometry. So the co-function identity is our relationships between the trig functions that do not have a co in them and the trig functions that do have a co in them. I said yesterday, you know, it sometimes seems a little arbitrary, like the cotangent is one over the tangent, but the cosecant is not one over the secant. I think this is where the names come from. And this says that, let me see, the cosine of a number t is the sine of pi over two minus t. Um, so angles are being measured in radians here. And the sine of t is the cosine of pi over two minus t. Let me put a line between these, keep them from running together. So all of these relationships, I mean, you see the symmetry. The sine is the cosine of pi over two minus t. The cosine is the sine of pi over two minus t. Um, the rest of these are similar, but before I put them on the board, where does this come from? Well, let's say we have a right triangle and we have an angle T. We've been using thetas, but I'm following the textbook here. The other angle, is going to be pi over two minus t. And that's because there are pi radians in a triangle. So this makes the radians add up to the right number. And if you've got the sides of a right triangle, well, the cosine of t is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. The sine of pi over two minus t is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. But of course, this side is switching roles, this side here. When you're looking at T, that's the adjacent side. So it shows up in the cosine. When you're looking at pi over two minus T, it's the opposite side. So it shows up in the sine. So these are all going to look the same. Secant is the cosecant of pi over two minus t. The cosecant is the secant of pi over two minus t. The tangent is the cotangent of pi over two minus t. And the cotangent is the tangent 
of pi over two minus t, just that same pattern repeated three times. Then, and I warned you, the remainder of this section would be kind of disjointed. Let's look at something that is not really related to that. Let's talk about applications of these trig functions. And this first application. is a geometric application finding sides of triangles. If you have a triangle and you have an angle um, 32 degrees, my following the textbook, it does seem a little random the way it flips between radians and degrees sometimes, but we have a 32 degree angle and we know one side of the triangle, say this, and it's a right triangle, then that gives us all the information we need to find the rest of the sides of the triangle, the hypotenuse and the other leg. Of course, strictly speaking, once we find the other leg, we could just use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. But let's find both these things as an application in trig. So we've got an angle. The seven is the side opposite the angle. Let's find B. B is the side adjacent to the angle. So we need a trig function that relates the opposite side and the adjacent side. And we have, in theory, two trig functions that do that. But in practice, you're going to be using either the sine, the cosine, or the tangent for these problems. And of those, it's the tangent. that relates the opposite and the adjacent sides. Now we do some kind of elementary algebra. And as for what seven over the tangent of 32 degrees is, I have no idea. Um, 32 is not one of the three angles we learned yesterday. Well, our calculator will be able to help us out. We always have to be careful where in degrees, 32 is 32 degrees, so I make that change. Then seven divided by the tangent of 32 is about 11.2. So, when, when we use the calculator, these trig functions are basically always going to be messy decimals. There's no hard and fast rule about rounding, but one decimal place seems okay here. Let's 
since I mean we don't or we have thirty two and seven. We don't have any significant digits. And then, as I say, I mean, you could, at this point, you could show this problem to a kid who's just learning the Pythagorean theorem and have a kid go nuts on it. But let's continue and find A as an exercise in trigonometry. A is the hypotenuse, and let me see, it's the sine that relates the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Once again, we have to do some algebra ideally without making weird little mistakes we'll multiply the a over and then do our division. So our calculator is now in degrees. So the sine of 32, 13.2. Where we've been keeping one decimal. After that, um, this is not going to take us fifty minutes, but since I open, since we have these online students, I don't want to just start a new section, so we'll go however long it takes. This next application, I mean, I'm calling it, I'm talking about it as if it's a different application, but it's exactly the same thing. It's just that we've got some kind of word problem associated with it. All right, so here is the classic problem of trigonometry. You've got a vertical whatever. Let's say a tree, and you want to know how big this is. Well, directly measuring large vertical distances is hard. On the other hand, measuring horizontal distances is easy. And if you have the right equipment, measuring that angle is easy. So let's say you're standing 30 feet from a tree and you measure this angle as 57 degrees and you want to know how tall the tree is. Well, we've got an angle and we've got a side and we want another side. And just like I said, this is basically the example we just did with a bit of a word problem thrown in. We know the adjacent side, we know the opposite side. 
we need a trade function that relates the two of them. And that trade function is the tangent. Take oats away. The tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side. We have to do slightly fewer steps with this problem. There's no, uh, there's no second division. Once we multiply that 30 over, we can go to our calculator. 30 and 57. It is about 46 feet tall. I've said this is a classic, classic sort of example or problem of trigonometry. I'm sure the first time I saw the word trigonometry was reading a Sherlock Holmes story from 1894, where they're on this treasure hunt and they are measuring shadows and they need to know how tall a tree is, but the tree's been cut down and Holmes' client is like, I'll never fear. When I was learning trigonometry as a kid, I had to calculate the heights of every tree and building on this estate. So I still have access to that information. Anyway, as I kind of predicted, a short lecture, but that's okay. It was a short week. I didn't want to start a second section and then get halfway through it. We will, we, I will see you Monday. Mm -hmm.